Danielle Outlaw is the commissioner of the Philadelphia Police Department. This disparity isn't five or ten points. No, this disparity right. is gaping. Yes. Are black murders pursued as aggressively? Yes. As urgently? Yes. With the same amount of manpower? Yes. Yes. Again, it's so across the So then why do you end up with this kind of disparity? I think it's obvious. I'm a black woman and I run the fourth largest police department in the country. What we need is a collaborative effort in solving these cases and an, an acknowledgement to what I think is there now, that it's going to take more than the police to clear these cases. And sometimes it sounds like what's implicit is that the community of color needs to trust the police more. No, not at all. We're talking about historically issues, systemic inequities that contribute to the mistrust, and then also things that the police have done and we've gotten in our own way. It has to be a two-way street, as it is with any relationship. Just an arrest is enough to move a murder case into the cleared column, even if the suspect still awaits a hearing, as this man now is. This counts as a good day for the beleaguered detectives in Philadelphia who don't have time to examine the trends. They're too busy trying to reverse them. And tomorrow we're going to report on the toll unsolved murders take on a community. We visit with a group of mothers in Jackson, Mississippi, who know the crushing pain of losing their child and are struggling to find justice. You know, Jim, when Commissioner Outlaw says she understands these historical issues, systemic inequities that contribute to the mistrust, they understand the issue. The question is, how do you fix it going forward? Right. Her point being, uh, and I, what I was pressing her on was, why do you hear the community has to do better? The community has to do better. Isn't it a question of the community and the police understanding the cooperation and having that trust? Solve it? That's right. And so her point was, yes, I agree. It is not just the community of color that needs to do better to solve, to, to elevate the rate of clearing murder cases the police have to do better as well. Yeah, but it's hard when either side trusts the other, though. And, but there are bruised feelings on both sides. It's very tough, but it's tough to see the disparity in black and white the way you just showed it to us. Sure. Thank you, Jim. Coming up next, we'll discuss the stunning new revelations about former President Trump's actions on January 6th with his former White House acting chief of staff, that's Mick Mulvaney, and a reminder and an invitation, you can always get this morning's news by subscribing to our CBS Mornings on the Go podcast, we call it. You get today's top stories in less than 20 minutes. Yep, we still call it a deal. You're watching CBS Mornings. We thank you for that. We'll be right back. I'm going to weigh in on what they've just got through talking about. Um, pertaining to all this that has inundated our country just within the past few years. Um, first of all, Whenever I was growing up, things was not the way that they are right now. Uh, whenever I was growing up, there wasn't near as many murders. And whenever I was growing up as a child, you had people that saw those murders. Today, society has become rank. Today, society has become bamboozled. Today, you can't even get most two different organizations pertaining to the church body here in America to stand with one another and agree upon the same thing. What has caused this? The intensity of the wickedness and the cleverness of the Antichrist spirit that has done this. That's what has caused this. It has caused disparities everywhere. Because I have been in and out of various jails in understanding how that they work, regardless whether it's local, state, or federal. They all have the same characteristics, which is see no evil, hear no evil, you don't know no evil. In other words, if you're in a pod with a group of people, let's say it's 40, 50 people in that pod, and there's a disagreement, and two people get into it with one another, and somebody either gets the heck beat out of them or they actually get killed. 99.9% .9 of the time, whenever you go in there and you start asking questions, well, what happened here? I don't know. I was asleep. Well, what'd you see? 
Well, I was in the bathroom. I don't have a clue. What did you, what, what's your story? I don't know nothing. I don't know a thing. Whenever you have a society that starts operating under these same pretenses, then you have a society that is working illegitimate below the standards of the table to the point that now everything is based upon street justice instead of legal justice and legal justice has now been knocked down to a secondary performance in regards to street justice. Same way in your prison system. Somebody can get killed and did nobody see a thing. Did nobody hear nothing? Did nobody see nothing? Don't nobody know nothing. Out of sight, out of mind. Our society today thinks that we can rely upon artificial technology pertaining to video in capturing various people that commit crimes. There's nothing wrong with that concept. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing at all wrong with that concept. And it's probably a good concept because I think other countries like China and other places, that's basically how that they corral or bring any type of order into their society is because they have cameras everywhere that's watching everybody at every uh, different angle. And they even go so far as taking people that does misbehave uh, on a, I guess you'd call it a, uh, um, lower level, like a civilian level, and they've used tactics towards embarrassing tactics of posting their name and their face on these big billboards. That way everybody can see what that they have done. Uh, I'm pretty sure whenever it comes to um, harsh crimes, uh, they go about their harsh crimes a whole lot more differently, uh, probably on, on the similar um Similar er, er, similarity is, is what the Saudi Arabians do, pretending to cutting off hands and arms and killing people. Um, as far as capital punishment, whenever a society can no longer use their instinct, their gut instinct, to be able to determine whether or not this person is telling the truth or this person is a lie because they themselves are working in the shadows of the darkness, they're going to be hoodwinked. They're going to be deceived. They're going to be lied to. They're going to be lied upon. And they're not going to be able to tell the difference between what's factual and what is basically uh, phony. It's just like these people around here, and this, this is the only thing that I know is to bring up the facts about my particular life. Whenever I got involved in passing out the material that I passed out in different intervals, in different ways, and in different times, they obviously thought the, the exact same thing about me that they have about other prophets of God or other messengers of God, that they was lying or that they was hallucinating, that their minds was playing tricks on them. Um, they even uh, falsely accused Jesus Christ of being um, being of the devil, and they falsely accuse Jesus Christ of being mad, which means crazy. Why is society like that? Why would they rather believe a lie than they would the truth? Well, it's kind of like this deal right now going on with the January 6th uprising pertaining to this, this formigated uh, attempted coup that Donald Trump basically uh, uh, was a cheerleader of, he was the orchestrator of, around here, this is considered Trump, Trump territory, Trumpy, Trumpyville, because man, whenever Trump was running for president, everybody and their brother in this area was run was supporting Trump. So now, since it's quieted down, the election is quieted down, a lot of those flags has disappeared. But not all of them, but a lot of them have. I can tell by talking to people out here on the streets, regardless whether it's in this store or that store, 
the vast majority of them, whenever you get to talking about them, to them about the January 6th deal that happened about a year and a half ago, I don't want to hear that. Oh, that's just a bunch of lies. Oh, every one of them up there in, in the White House need need to uh, need to quit and go home, or some people even goes as far as say every one of them need to die. They do not want to hear the truth. You know why they don't want to hear the truth? Because the truth not be in them. That's why. And even Jesus spoke about that. He spoke very, very clearly about that. I just got through looking up a while ago. Coincidentally. The name blasphemy of what did Google have to say towards recognizing the name blasphemy according to the Bible and just exactly what that what that word represents. According to Google, blasphemy means to use profanity against God. According to Google. Well, wasn't it blasphemy, the very thing that they was accusing Jesus Christ of during his trial? Because Jesus basically asked them, For what good works does thou persecute me for? And they spoke up and said, We're not persecuting you over the good works towards raising the dead, feeding the hungry, turning water into wine, healing the sick. We're persecuting you because of blasphemy. You claim to be the Son of Man. You claim to be the only begotten. And because we know that you're not, that's what we're going to kill you for. We're going to kill you because you're fraudulent. You're a heretic. You're nothing but a phony and a fake. You're a come on. You're a gimmick. You're a uh, uh, um, a scandal and a scandaler, and that's the reason why we want to kill you. So, in actuality, the word blasphemy does not mean using profanity against God, because God teaches us that all sins shall be forgiven, even the sins of profanity against God, providing that you reach that sincere state of wanting to be forgiven or feeling like that you have made this mistake with God to the point that you need to be forgiven. But there's one mistake that you won't be forgiven of. That's blasphemy. Being fraudulent. Being a fraud. Telling people that you have the real thing, but in reality, you really don't. And of course, proof is in the pudding for the past 30 plus years since I've stood out in this neighborhood that so many people thought that I was a fraud or thought that I was a heretic, which the word heretic is a Bible terminology that means a liar, thought that I was a liar or they thought that I had bad motives in doing what I was doing they thought that I was basically a celebrity hound or something, that I was trying to gain recognition for myself. And it was none of the above. None of the above. A matter of fact, now since all this has occurred, not only do I see the same people that didn't want to believe in the things that I was teaching and preaching for the past 30 plus years, but now I'm seeing the same people that are without any type of approach they're without any type of shame. They don't want to take any type of accountability towards the country and the world turning out to be so ugly. And they're still sitting back in the corner sniggering at, at Juby, me, Dennis. <laughs> we had him fooled, didn't we? No. You didn't have me fooled. Who you fooled was yourself. And you for darn sure didn't fool God. You see, I've had people that has moved completely out of this area. And whenever I say moved completely out of this area, I'm talking about just people just brought up the road less than probably two football fields away that has purposely left this area because they know that they're guilty 
and the type of people that they are, they would rather go to, to their graves than to admit that they was wrong and I was right. That they was wrong and I was right. And it wasn't just the fact that they didn't want to believe me. They were so dead set in the way that they felt about me that they had already convinced themselves of all these lies to the point that they started believing in their own lies. You see, when if you take a small neighborhood, and it don't really matter where, in a lot of incidences, people talk. People, people like to talk about other people. Men talk about the women. Women talk about the men. People talk about the weather. People talk about politics. People talk about uh, uh, whether or not people are losing money. People talk about the high gas prices. People talk about things that affect their lives, right? Talk about people's health. Whether or not you got good health, bad health. Whether or not this one's got deteriorating health. Or this one's doing real good in the ball game towards being strong. So people talk. People talk. Even my grandfather taught me before he died in 1969, me just being a young lad. He taught us boys, don't worry about filling about filling the wagon with corn, shucking corn and filling the wagon. Don't worry about about filling the back end. You just worry about filling the front end and the back end will take care of itself. And then he'd say, don't worry about what people say about you. And I kind of look at him kind of funny. It's like, well, Grandpa, don't you think that's bad when people are talking about you? He looked at me. He'd say, son, if they ain't talking about you, they letting somebody else rest. In other words, people's going to talk. People's going to gab. People's going to gossip. They was doing it back in the Bible days, back back in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they're still doing it to this day. People are going to be people, and people has the characteristics of people. The point that I'm trying to make pertaining to all the murders that are now uh, being predominant in not only America but throughout the world is that since COVID has hit, the value of life was already being diminished and, and de 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 uh, depreciated on a level that I had never seen before from the time that I was being raised up in the 60s and the 70s of whenever somebody would die in the neighborhood, oh my God, how did they die? Well, they, they was involved in a bad accident or they had a heart attack or this or that. And people would go to people's houses and they'd, they'd try to comfort those people because we knew that that bond in the community is what built that community. Today, because of the big conglomerates with the insurance companies and et cetera, et cetera, with all the entitlements from the government, people don't no longer have to make that bond. You know why? Because the insurance companies are going to take care of that family. The government's going to, going to give that, that young girl the entitlements that she needs to be able to raise that baby, even though she hooked up with a sorry, no good for nothing human being. Is that the way that we're supposed to react and respond to each other? No. We're supposed to be there with one another and for one another in the brotherhood. Even if we're not saved, we should still do that out of the decency of one another towards watching out for one another. Whenever it reached a point that my brother and I was concerned about three little children across the road, and the way that I got rewarded for it from the state of Tennessee was having to own up to stalking stalking in other words it was the same thing if i had cameras out there and i was cameraing these people or if i was out there with a, with a gun and, and i had them in my crosshairs and, and i didn't have no motive in me watching these people other than me wanting to snoop around in their lives that wasn't the that wasn't it at all the whole primary purpose was the children and if the people that was living across the road didn't have no children I'd said this openly and publicly, and I'll say it again, really and truly, if they wanted to beat and bang one another's brains out in whatever form, as long as I wasn't seeing it or watching it or or, or uh, being somehow or another exposed to it, 
What is it to me? They're adults. Let them do what they want to one another over there. Especially if they have that much more hate and remorse in my life because they was was uh, begrudging the fact that I ever come back here to begin with. As a matter of fact, all these people, most all of them, not all of them, but most all of them around here hated the fact that I stepped foot back in Weekly County and in Obine County, Tennessee, and Northwest Tennessee. Why was that? Because the seeds of hate, bitterness, rejection, the seeds of division, the seeds of retaliation, the seeds of the resistance movement didn't just begin whenever I come back here. That hatred and that spirit of hate was already here. And it had been building and building and building throughout the years because I had spent endless, endless hours, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, thousands of dollars towards getting my message out to the people that everybody wanted to smear and reject and basically put me on the same pedestal as they was putting Jesus Christ by telling the Lord himself, well, for good works, we not persecute you for, but for you owning up to something or admitting to something that we know that you're not, that's why we're going to kill you. Because we know that you're not who that you say that you are. Well, they was wrong then. They was wrong about the flood. They was wrong about Moses. They was wrong about other prophets of God that stood up towards being messengers. And they're going to be proven to be wrong about this message too as well. I just got through getting off the phone a while ago talking to an investigator that I've gained a relationship with here in Weekly County. I'm not going to mention his name because it ain't nobody's business. But the fact of the matter is, he knows the law inside and out, and he works for various people that send him out. I think he's licensed in about 15 different states. He goes to different places. They pay for his room and board, pay for his gas, pay for his miles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he's got a good high rating towards a success rating and going after whoever he goes after and gets the information that's desired from the people that's paying him to get this information. He's a private investigator. And he basically works for insurance companies a lot of times in fraudulent cases. But I explained to him that these same people that was accusing me of being fraudulent, these same people that was accusing me towards being a celebrity hound 30 plus years ago before they even created the open internet to the public pertaining to artificial intelligence, pertaining to Facebook and, and Twitter and YouTube and all these other social media platforms. I had to get out and do things the old fashioned way towards using my feet and getting out of my vehicle and going and placing material at, at all the front of these churches or back of these churches or putting leaflets up underneath people's windshield wipers and, and handing out uh, cards to people as they was coming out of uh, a nightclub or a building somewhere or going down to Bill Street and telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, I had to start down on this end and then I evolved to this end and then I evolved to this end and then I went up and then I went up towards different levels of tactics that I was using to get my message out. And of course, now today I'm using artificial intelligence and getting my message out the way that I'm getting out with, with, uh, with social media platform. You may be saying, what's your point? The point is this, whenever you have investigators that are of a demonic source, it's just as Jesus said for one kingdom going up against another kingdom towards, towards the devil, Jezebel, trying to cast out demons with Jezebel for a divided house will not stand. And that's the reason why that we're falling. We're falling not only in the crimes going up, but we're falling in the fact that the crimes ain't being settled. They're not being solved no more. Why is that? Why is that? Is it because we're not paying these detectives and these investigators 
enough money? No. It's not that at all. Is it because we don't have sophisticated cameras and, and, uh, and artificial intelligence pretending to being able to video people on various street corners and see various things going on, just like over there in China? No. It's not that at all. It's got to do with this in here. It's got to do with who are you a subservient to. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord. You're going to have to serve somebody. And whenever you have a society that is turned wicked to the point that now the wicked is trying to to uh, reprimand the wicked, well, that ordinarily don't work too well. Why is that? Because you can't cast out demons with demons. It don't work. It ain't going to work. That's a divided house. It's going to take a movement coming from the true churches that's going to have to get it right here. And this includes not just the church sector, but it's going to include the courts. It's going to have to include our investigators, our detectives, and all the above. Going by that gut instinct of who is guilty versus who is not. And, you know, you can look at a camera, a uh, uh, a body camera on cops in four, five, six different directions. And a lot of times the camera don't, it's, it's, it's really unjustified, unjustifiable in how that you're witnessing that event just off of what did you see? And even in some cases, even what you hear, it has to be done within. And if we can't do it from within, it ain't going to be done. Now, the very people that accused me of being fraudulent, the very people that accused me of, of running some sort of a scheme or, or me being a, 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 a scandal of some sort of way are being a celebrity hound, now are finding out, oh, Oh dear, that man that we degraded, that we talked bad about, that we laughed about, that man that we took his father's word versus his son's word on, that man that dedicated over half of his life in this ministry, he's still doing that. That's one of the things that I just thought thanked my Heavenly Father for by talking to this investigator that I thank God after 30 plus years. You keep in mind, whenever I first made that telephone call to the White House, I was 24 years old. Now I'm 61. There's been a lot of time that has passed from 1983 to 2022. And now I've sat back and I've witnessed this. I've seen them how that they squandered, how that they started uh, backtracking, how that they started being extremely liberal, but they were still fighting against one another, and they wouldn't agree. The Presbyterians wouldn't agree with the, with the Church of Christ, and the Church of Christ wouldn't agree with, with, with the, with the uh, uh, Assembly of God, and Assembly of God wouldn't agree with, with the Catholics, and the Catholics wouldn't agree with... With, uh, with the Lutherans, et cetera, et cetera. I've seen them tear one another apart. This is the point I'm making. I've seen them tear one another apart to the point now that, that they're being raped, butchered, trumpeted upon, overdosed, committing suicides. I've seen the churches fall completely apart. But because of their stupidity and because of their pride, they still refuse to acknowledge the message that I started out with going all the way back to 1983, pertaining to the Antichrist and me going to face the Antichrist and before the poison arrow struck the flesh of my skin that I was going to vaporize. I was going to vanish. That that's whenever Gable was going to blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ was going to rise. And those who was alive and well was going to be literally transfigurated from mortal to immortal in the twinkling of an eye, 
as God was coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them who knew not God, and upon them who obeyed not the gospel by burning everything down to the ground as he was gathering up the elect. Yeah. In other words, I don't just talk to talk. I'm really walking to walk. Does that mean that I'm a saint? No. Does that mean I'm never going to make a, a mistake? No. Does that mean I'm going to have shortcomings? Probably. Does that mean I'm going to make failures? Probably. Does that mean that I still can't walk on water? Probably. Does that mean that I still can't raise the dead? Probably. But what it also means that it doesn't stop me from wanting to achieve the very same things that Jesus achieved by getting closer and closer and closer to the Heavenly Father by becoming even as He was towards being perfect. You don't stop in a failure. Just because you failed does not make you a failure. Those are the tricks of the devil that want to tell you that. Those were some of the indoctrinations that was given to me that, Dennis, if you can't walk the walk, if you can't talk the walk, best thing for you to do is just quit serving God altogether all and start serving the devil. Well, that ain't what God intended for you to do. Besides that, if you've ever truly been saved, you ain't going to want to do those things. I'm not saying that you ain't going to get captured or trapped or enticed are over-tempted towards falling for some of those entrapments. I know I have. I'm not going to lie to you. I have. But you know what? I've done a lot of regrets, too. I've regretted that I was stupid, and I fell for those entrapments, and I, and I took the left turn whenever I should have took the right. The point that I'm trying to make is this pertaining to the murders here in America. The murders are only going to increase because now since COVID has hit, the, the, uh, the way that we look at one another has even belittled itself even more so, kind of like a dealership down the road here that starts promoting, let's say, a Dodge truck for $27,000. But then if you talk to them just right, you can actually get it for seventeen. dollars they have devaluated the value of what that they originally started at, and now they're willing to take this. Well, I'm not willing to take that. I'm not going to devaluate myself. I know that my Lord and my God is alive and well. I know that I serve with and through a risen living Savior, the only risen living Savior by the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that without him, I would not be here right now being able to make this particular video toward trying to help people. And I know until people uh, want to make that ultimate transformation towards going from the worldly side back into God's side, they're not never going to be able to solve the crimes and the crimes are only going to escalate and get worse and worse and worse. We're in a fix right now. The rich and the powerful, those that's got thick bank accounts that was devious enough or maybe they was just crafty enough and good enough. I don't know. Maybe they was just hard workers. Maybe they was just good, honest people. Uh, clever and use their head and finance and now they're they're basically they're taken care of in their golden years these people they're not going to try to make any type of attempts one way or the other because they're just waiting for their dying day to occur or the lord to return back it's the young generation it's the working generation it's the poor people that right now are struggling with the high prices and are struggling with the devaluation of human life. And as I'm watching things continue to fall apart and continue to go south, I'm still not seeing no improvements towards 
people trying to uh, take all these wrongs and turn them back into rights. It's it's horrifying in in what the so-called church society has done, not just with what they didn't do that they should have done in the late 80s with Ronald Reagan after nine tapes went to the White House, but it's really sad that they have let it fester and go this far and we're only just now beginning to wake up pertaining to these problems. Just like it's taken a whole year and a half to get testimonies from the inside traits of Donald Trump's orbit of who was actually with Donald Trump the day of January the 6th and the people that was surrounding Donald Trump. It has taken this long before finally they're getting to the bottom of it towards understanding what was said, why it was said, who said it, when it was said, what their motives was. You know, like Donald Trump, well, well, yeah, I know they got guns, but none of those guns are for me. He was absolutely agitating, orchestrating what was going on that day because he wanted to be in the thick of it towards going to the Capitol. That way he could be like a, a, a sworn leader charging his way through the Capitol and overpowering whoever that he wanted to overpower. And the thing about his his deceived mind, even if he would have accomplished those things that day, let's say there was a bloodbath. Let's say that he, he accomplished those things. Do you really think that that was going to be the end of it? That would have only been the beginning of it. You're talking about a knockdown drag out that would have been on a civil war scale here in America towards people shooting and killing one another because of what this guy had deceived the American people by fraudulently deceiving them in thinking that the election had been stolen and the whole time the perpetrator that was doing the lying and the perpetrator that was doing the stealing was not the Democrats, but it was rather the Republicans trying to steal the election from the Democrats. Deception. The master of the hand, the magician, the sly of the hand. That's what the American people fell for. They fell for it in the election that brought on this uprising of the, of the attempted coup, and they also fell for the very same thing towards what went on that shouldn't have went on in 1988, because now we can look back and see where Saddam Hussein did not have no mass bombs of destruction. We can look back and see where the Afghanistan people did not have anything to do with 9-11. They wasn't financially able to pull off 9-11. Plus, we're talking about basically a bunch of sheep, holder, uh, sheep herders over there that wasn't qualified to pull off 9-11. Uh, we're talking about a uh, young Bush that basically went to war uh, the second time with Saddam Hussein because Saddam Hussein had basically threatened his daddy. And we're talking about a group of people in the White House that wanted to create a diversion of making people believe that it was the Afghanistan people that masterminded 9-11. But the whole time, instead of it being the Afghanistan people, it was the Saudi Arabians. How many more times is the American people going to be fooled, regardless whether it comes to settling crime on a low end? And I'm not saying that that, that murder is not a, a, a big crime, because it is, versus something that has occurred way up here with the White House on an international level. How many times is the American people going to sit back and plead insanity or plead the fifth about all this and thinking that they're still going to continue to not be held accountable. Because I promise you, beginning in Kent, Tennessee in 1983, they may be dead and gone now, 
They may be laying in a grave right now, pretending to Damien Cross or some of the Neils, uh, especially Leroy Neal, that almost injured my hearing uh, the day that I was fixing to drop off those nine tapes that was trying so, so desperately to tell me, do not do it, do not do it, do not send those tapes to the White House, that I was wrong about interpreting the Bible the way that I had interpreted it. After me spending almost two years of praying with these people, going to church with these people, working with these people, helping their father for almost two consecutive years. And we're not just talking about church every now and then. We're talking about church on Sunday morning, church on Sunday night, church on Wednesday night. We'd have prayer meeting on Tuesday night. We'd have fish fries, cookouts. I become closely intertwined with this family. But yet, no. In 1988, they wasn't going to have it. And it was a group of people like that that got it got spreading out to all these other groups that this man is of the devil. He's not only a lunatic, but he's a devil worshiper. So, I'm not a devil worshiper. And I would rather die a thousand deaths right now than to even begin to characterize myself as being associated with Lucifer. I'm not a Luciferian. Okay? I am a true blue, born-again, American, red-blooded Christian here in America that believes solely in the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what I can prove of every tape, every VH tape, every DVD, every radio station or TV station or whatever that I have displayed again and again and again. So who's wrong and who's right here? Let's go back to what happened with Jesus. It wasn't until the 5th century until people started acknowledging that Jesus was God. The 5th century. Wow. It took that long before people started acknowledging the teachings of Christ was in fact authentically real and true as far as it being the gospel now to this day even to this day we still have people in America some of them believe that if you don't get baptized in the name of Jesus that you haven't been baptized we have people here in America that believe that you have to be baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit's name. The Trinitarian, the Trinity, the Pyramid, Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. They can't recognize that both is right because something has happened to their intellect. They can't understand that both is right. It's kind of like me working with the Yahweh people years ago that kept saying, well, you have to worship on Saturday because that's the true Sabbath, and you have to pray and preach and believe in the name of Yahweh because that's the original Greek word of Christ, Yahshua and Yahweh. Yahweh representing the Father, Yahshua representing the Son. That's the original Hebrew. Okay, well, what about all these other nationalities that has all these other different languages that call the same God? by a different name, but it's the same deity. It's kind of like water. Water's H2O. We call water here in America water, but if you go to other places in Mexico and Europe and, and France and, and other parts of the world, they don't call water water. It's still H2O, but they don't call it water. Does that mean it's different? No. These people have warped minds. And they don't understand that in the, Trin in the Trinitarian, the Father has a position towards the top of the pyramid, the Son compartmental compartmentalizing himself towards walking in the flesh, had his department, and then the Holy Spirit had his department pertaining to the Comforter. They all have three different, clear departments. 
compartmentalizing all three of them differently. But at the same time, they're all three of the same. The Father is the Son. The Son is the Father. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. The Lord is the Holy Spirit. They're all working in conjunction with one another. And for some reason, the people that I've been dealing with, especially in the Bible Belt area, in this area around here, just don't get it, man. They're playing these freaking games. In the meantime, crime is rising. Our national debt is rising. We have seen a, a, a disaster pertaining to COVID. We've seen death and destruction now that's bombarding our streets pertaining to crime. We're seeing Russia uh, that's no doubt committing war crimes against the Ukrainians for trying to genocide civilians. We're seeing other things that's going on that is crippling or hurting our society here. But yet, no. They still rather submit me and keep me over into the department, compartmentalizing me as me either being a lunatic or a fraud. Well, you know, you can keep this up only for a certain length of time before eventually it's going to come home to you. Mr. Niels, Kay, and Faye, and the rest of them over in Kenton, Tennessee, the rest of them over in O'Brien County, and the rest of them over here in Weekly County. You can only keep this up for a certain length of time, and I promise you, it may be whenever they're throwing dirt over your grave. You're going to give an account for the things that you didn't do that you should have done, or you're going to give an account for the things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. Bottom line, as your world is crumbling and, and tossing up in front of you, and as you're seeing innocent lives being destroyed, you keep in mind that you could have prevented all this if you would have got in behind the messenger during the man of the hour, of the hour, in him preaching what he was preaching. But you wasn't going to support that. Even the, the United Pentecostal Church, after me spending almost two years with them people, down in Jackson, Tennessee, the Lighthouse Pentecostal Church, I was rejected denied, made fun of, ridiculed, judged, and condemned by the first United Pentecostal Church here in this area. Now, I can't say about all the other areas because I realize the United Pentecostal Church is big. They're all over. But what I can talk about is what happened in my life in Jackson, Tennessee, pertaining to to that organization that I extended my hand out and they went, we ain't going to accept that. We're not going to have this man ruling over us with this type of ideology. He's been indoctrinated by this. We're still, we're still thinking that we're all going to vanish and just up and disappear. We're not going to have to go through no hardships. We're not going to have to go through any type of tribulation. We're still believing in the old way going all the way back to Genesis. Whenever God said, recreate and replenish the earth. For some reason, their minds cannot conceive of the things that was said then, was then, and the things that Christ talked about now, especially out of the book of Revelations, to be thou faithful unto death, he who shall overcome will not be heard of the second death. For some reason, they got a mind block. It's kind of like the baptism. They don't understand that both is right. And, and besides that, you can be baptized a thousand times, either in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the name of Jesus or Yasuus, or whoever's name pertaining to the one that represents the Lord per, per, pertaining to that uh, culture that has that, that type of language that illustrates what they're talking about. You can be baptized a thousand times and you're still not saved if you hadn't been first born again in the name of the Lord Jesus' teachings and the Holy Spirit. Because the Father seeketh those, seeketh those 
who worship him in truth and in spirit. And if you're not worshiping God in truth, if you're not worshiping God in spirit, no matter what name you use, no matter if you get baptized a thousand times, you're still not saved. You're still not saved. You just think that you're saved out of rituals. Stand up, say a prayer, kneel, get back up, sing a hymn, read something out of the scriptures, kneel again. These are all rituals. Christ said to do away with all that stuff. We don't have to have a mediator. We don't have to have a priest to go into a secret room and can make a confession. That's the whole purpose for, for Christ said that he didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Now you and I can go boldly before the throne. We don't have to have a priest or a mediator or some middle person. That's all scam. If you want to look at scams, if you want to look at gimmicks, that's, there's your gimmicks. If you want to look at the people that was that was actually committing uh, blasphemy the day that they crucified Christ, it was the very people that was accusing Christ of blasphemy that was committing the blasphemy, the priests, the rabbis, the holy men, etc., etc., etc. Well, this is where we are now. We're in a messed up generation. They have taken various words out of context. Um, just like blasphemy, blasphemy is not profanity. You can use the name GD all you want, but you can be forgiven of, of using the name GD if you're sincere, authentically sincere, and you ask for forgiveness. It's those that are bogus. It's those that are fake. It's those that are phony that acting like that they're sincere, the ones that God's going to say, depart from me for I've never known you. He'll know if he, he has ever known you because of your sincerity with him. And, and the way that you prove that sincerity is that after you leave that cross, after you leave that altar, after you have come to the realization of what that you have done that you're uh, remorseful about, that you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. If you turn right around and go right back into that again, something's wrong. Now, I've made mention to this investigator before, and I'll say this to you. Today, we're dealing with things that they didn't have to deal with back 2,000 years ago. And it's not just running water and electricity. It's not just, just the modernization of man pertaining to the inventions of man. But... It's also got to do with chemicals. These chemicals of these of these people that get involved in a lot of this stuff, first of all, they didn't get in that situation overnight. And odds are they're not going to get out of that situation overnight. It's going to take a great deal of commitment from the churches as far as prayer, counseling, talking, more prayer, counseling, talking, more prayer and if these people that's out there in the world that, that are this way if they're not worth working with towards getting them away from that lifestyle then odds are you ain't doing your job that you're supposed to be doing one of the services that i really really become very fond of and that was one of the things that my brother and i he helped me invest money in putting up a sign with my grandmother's picture on pertaining to the three h's uh, habits, hang-ups, and heartaches that I learned in a church in Denver, Colorado towards a 12-step program with Dennis Leonard. That they would group up people that if you had an alcohol problem, you didn't have no business being with a group of people that had sex problems. You didn't have no business being around people that had a lazy problem. You didn't have no business towards being around people that had theft problems. They put the thieves with the thieves. They put the... Uh, um, the rapist with the rapist, they put the lazy people with the lazy people, they put the alcoholics with the alcoholics, they put the narcotics with the narcotics, and they broke them up. And every week, you would come to a session, and everybody in that circle, you'd have several circles, 
they would have a period of five minutes to talk, express what they'd done that week, talk about their failures and their successes openly while everybody else stayed quiet. And all this was supposed to have been done confidentially. Naturally, if you get to talking and you're telling people that you'd raped somebody or that you'd killed somebody, by law, the counselor there or the um, um, person working with the church, they have to report that, especially if it's dealing with children. But they would talk about their successes and their failures and at the end of the session ordinarily you'd get a token maybe it was just a little a little round uh, button or something like a token every time you went to a meeting successfully you got a token now does that mean you had to go to all 12 meetings one right on top of another? No. What it meant, in order for you to graduate, you had to have 12 tokens to turn in to say that you have earned your entitlement of being a graduate. And there was one night, I think they done this quarterly, every three months, the people that come together that was successful and not only their tokens, but in their testimony, they would give them the opportunity of standing in a gymnasium and telling their open story, their testimony, openly before the rest of the crowd. And some of those testimonies that they was given was pretty intense. Some was talking about how that they was nothing more than rotten, stinking whores, and that they would sleep with four or five men sometimes every night. The guys would talk about how that they'd get out here and steal and, and take advantage of people and rob people and how that they would knock people in the head and, and, and do some of the awfulest things. But it was a way to release and to let go of the old because they was acknowledging of the new. In other words, they was bearing the old bringing in the new and these churches today that want to act like that they go down and pray for somebody oh let's all pray for them come on come on down here let's all pray for them and then they kick them to the curb they never call them they never counsel with them again they never stay on top of their game towards what he or she uh why didn't they come back why didn't they why didn't they you know make a, a deeper commitment or a dedication? Well that's why. It's because the church world has failed them. The church world should be looked upon in the same terminology as a hospital or a clinic. And whenever it gets to where that people in the churches think that you have to clean up just in order to come to the church, they got it bass backwards. You come to the church dirty, filthy, as rags, crummy looking, smell bad, look bad. Your life is turned upside down. You don't know what you're going to do for your next meal or whatever. If those people are doing their jobs according to Christ, they won't lay hands on you one time and pray for you. They'll have somebody assigned to you that will call you, that will be there for you anytime you need them. You call them day or night. We're working with you on this. We want to get you off of this stuff. We want to get you turned around. We want to see that you become a predominant citizen of society to the point that you become a, a, a success in your life. We don't want to see you down in the dirt, down in a ditch. If, you're, if you are in this situation yourself and you go to a body of believers that claim to be a body of believers and if that's the cold shoulder that you get from that body of believers just like all these other churches around here that has kicked me out and told me that I wasn't welcome to come to any of their churches even though I haven't never stepped foot in any of their churches. They have told malicious lies about me again and again and again right here in this neighborhood. That's not of God. 
Now, granted, if I've ever been violent, yes, kick me out. But I've never been. I don't go into churches and try to take over the leadership qualities of that body of believer. I go in there and I humbly listen and I pray and then I leave. No questions asked. And if you don't believe me, you can contact this minister right up here in Union City, Tennessee. Uh, uh, the uh, um, first United Pentecostal people up here, Brother Brother Cagle, and you can contact him right right over here by the Church of Christ Church in behind the in behind the hospital and call him up and talk to him. Every time that I've ever been there, have I acted decent? Have I acted orderly? Every time. And they have witnessed that. And they have responded to me. Not necessarily in the brotherlyhood towards loving and hugging and holding and stuff like that. Um, but Brother Cagle has been working with me. He knows my testimony. He knows the things that went on back years ago with the Lighthouse Pentecostal Church with Brother Brown and his son Richard. It's now in, out in California uh, holding down a church over there. And Brother Cagle has the decency, and he has told his deacon body and his leadership in that church that if I come back, that I'm always welcome. Matter of fact, he just texted me about two days ago and told me that, Dennis, you're always welcome to worship here. And that's one thing that I can say about Brother Cagle and his First United Pentecostal Believing Church up here, that they've never rejected me, they've never disrespected me, and they've never, as far as I know, brought false accusations against me. But now all these other ones around here have. Have I gotten any type of apology for that? In the meantime, your deaths is increasing, your suicides is increasing, your overdoses is increasing. We're seeing prices on our shelves go out the roof. Gas has come down just a little bit in northwest Tennessee. I don't know if it's the same in other places like Nashville or Memphis, because usually the bigger the town, the higher the taxes. But we we're in we're in a bad we're in a bad shape right here. And I still point my finger of the core of origin that began right here in northwest Tennessee towards a group of people that was not going to have my ideology that they called indoctrination. They was not going to have that in their, in their uh, frame of reference towards the things that I was teaching and telling them of it being correct and accurate. They brought this upon themselves. That's the reason why I say what I say again and again and again. They never did want peace. They wanted a so-called peace. White man speaketh with forked tongue. They talked about peace. But in reality, the Bushes, they wanted to do other things. And of course, in retaliation of what they'd done, helped to create 9-11. And of course, 9-11, we got uh, off in a left frenzy towards going to war with a country for 20 years, spending uh, $2 trillion and, and not counting all the lives that was damaged. There's been a lot of mistakes made, beginning at the White House. And what happened January the 6th was another one of them. And it was only, only by the hand of God that prevented from that occurrence from turning into something that would have been unimaginable for the world, much less us as Americans, to have comprehended. Thank you for listening. Good luck to all of us. Thank you, and, and thank you for your prayers, those that keep me in your prayers. And just want to say thank you, and we're praying for you. And if there's anything that we can help you with, don't hesitate to call upon us. Um, if you want to come by and chit-chat, chew the fat, drink a cup of coffee, or glass of tea or Kool-Aid. We're always welcome here. Um, we just want to say how much we appreciate those that are sincere in the Lord that does want to see this turned around to the point of one day seeing an actual utopia or a peace to fall upon the society before the opening of the red horse or the second seal. That's what I have started out preaching 30 plus years ago. In addition to the teachings of Christ, of love, grace, forgiveness, etc., 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 
But to be attacked this way by your own people, it's, it's degrading. It's, it's demortifying. And I can actually empathize and sympathize with what Jesus and a great deal of the prophets, including Abraham and Moses and all them other ones, have went through in the past. I can really, really empathy and have sympathy for them now because I myself has went through the similar type situations. Whenever a country is no longer motivated by the values of good, and it has, it has reversed that incentive towards a fake incentive, phony, artificial, generic. Then you have what you have as far as anarchy. Good luck to all of us, and shalom. wanted to show you something real quick before I turn this off. I've just done this. Um, i just done this a day or two ago. I haven't completed it yet. I got these uh, I got these things here to where um, where you can turn them on independently 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 and they put out water right there they're supposed to I think I turned the wrong one on I did this I got this set up on a four-way over here I turned the wrong one on 
Uh, let's see here. Turn that one right there on. All right. There we go. I'm going to put some green carpet down here and clean all this up. That way I have me a little patio. But I've made me a cooling station. And where I got the ideal was from Phoenix, Arizona, when I was out there in their walkways, whenever people was waiting for the bus, they would, uh, they would have these cooling stations, just a fine mist. See that mist? Just a fine mist that would come out. And of course I can independently control each one of them by turning, let's say I wanted that one off. And let's say I wanted this one here off. So I can independently do that, turn them off, while the other ones are still working. See what I'm saying? Or, let's say I was out here, I got real hot and sweaty, and doing yard work, and it was super, super hot. And I decided, well, I need to, I need to take a shower real quick, that way I don't mess up my internal shower where I am ta actually taking a shower so I can cool off right there real quick or get the, gr the gr crud off of me and then go in the shower and actually take a shower I keep this one light on basically all the time because it burns without hardly spending a lot of money on it but occasionally, whenever I want to have company, all I gotta do is come out here and take this bub right here and turn that bub right there on. And I can do the same thing to all the other ones. I probably have, in addition to the top, all the piping, all the different pipe riggers that I put up, I probably got a little over $150 in it. Maybe two, not counting my labor. But I thought to myself, you know, that's not a bad, that's not a bad little ideal. Because the fact of the matter is, you put a swimming pool in, first of all, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And second of all, if you put a swimming pool in, first thing the insurance is going to do is want to, want to either triple the cost of your insurance because you have an open exposed pool or you'll be mandated have to put a fence around it and and take this precaution and have this little doodad hooked up to that little doodad for safety purposes or you can just come out here like i've done whenever you're hot and sweaty and it's 100 degrees outside and walk into your cooling station and if you want to, you can sit in your chair. Like I said, I'm not finished with this. I know it's dirty. It ain't it ain't done yet. But if you want to, you can come out here and enjoy yourself. And open up your little spouts, just like that. Okay. And not burn up whenever it's 100 degrees outside. See all this, all the condensation is blowing that way. And of course, if the wind's going this way, it'll go that way. Or if the wind's coming this way, it'll go that way. I just wanted to show people that, that uh, everything about a Christian is not bad and is not crazy. Sometimes we do have decent ideals towards doing decent things and helping people. Especially with dealing with all the irregularities with the weather right now pertaining to global warming that I knew was uh, real going back 30 some odd years ago. But of course, whenever you have all these people that's been brainwashed, global deniers, now it's caught up with us all. Do I have a sense of humor? Yeah, I think I do. I think I have a sense of humor. I 
I love the Lord. I'm patriotic. I'm out here by myself doing things. You know, I'm pro-life. I choose life. I choose life, not death. Commandments of God on my door. Back on the back. Military. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Love, peace. P-O-W. Built a more memorial out here in honor of our military and also the slain. This memorial was displayed after George Floyd's death. May the 25th, 2020. I'm going to have to do some arrangement out here. I'm still working on the Purple Heart. Um, my flowers have really taken a beating because of the red rock that's absorbing the heat. I'm going to have to eliminate a great deal of the red rock. That way it don't uh, burn up my flowers. But uh, this is just our way of Telling people about the love of God and telling people about the love of the Lord. And it's our way in showing our patronism out here towards what we believe and why we believe in the blessings from God. Even though some people disliked me coming back and hated the very appearance of Christ Incorporated Associates. 2014. That was the year that I come back. Good luck to all of us, and happy 4th of July, in honor of our independence, of those who fought, sacrificed, bled, died for our freedoms. Thank you, and shalom.